events. Don't look for that. Mm. It would be wrong to say, oh, this event, that event happened. She doesn't intervene in human events. She's going to intervene in our mindset. And one of the signs of this intervention is that the whole archontic paradigm of false science is literally going to crumble. You won't even have to take it apart. It will fall apart. Because the obvious falsity of it will be made apparent by these anomalies. Mm. That's much more convincing than a theory. You see? Absolutely. And, and also, yeah. it, what... In, what happens here, obviously, John, is that people can basically participate in this. We should all then, uh, to some degree or another, logically be able to go about, I guess, confirming some of these anomalies. What, what would you suggest that people can do? What, what is easy to do in terms of that, John? It's easy to, first of all, observe the anomalies as they happen locally and perhaps collect in, uh, records or, or reports or testimony of them off the internet or off uh, wherever they show up and just collect them and keep in mind what the anomalies are and then uh, if you want to look into my site, if you want to write me jll at metahistory.org I can put someone on the list of the crew and what I send out is a periodic notes on the crew where I make my observations and comments about what is causing the anomaly relative to this nautical metaphor. Mm. See? I'm saying, let's accept a nautical metaphor, but this nautical metaphor, if you participate in it, will actually show you what's happening. It's not just a metaphor. It's not for interpretation. It is, as you say, for participation. Yeah. So the great thing about the solution of Sophia and the correction is that we can participate in it. Whereas if we go back into the problem too much, we end up participating in the problem. Mm. It's true. Yeah, it's true. And uh, it's time. There's no more time for that. This correction is going to happen in 10 seconds of the ionic time. 10 seconds of her time. This is how fast. I have to tell you that Gaia's process is vast and fast. And on our level, we're talking about, what do you say, about three, three, three years? years? Yeah. 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 Three years. That's right. Well, because one second is 108 days of our time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Um, how about that, John? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a pretty interesting uh, ride we're up for here. Then, in that sense, um, one more thing I was thinking about, John, before we you know begin to wrap things up for this time is the the. I mean, again, we I think we're back into to this idea of it's pretty much impossible for us to plot this or for you to to fully maybe grasp uh, exa uh, you know exactly how this is going to unfold and so forth but the journey that uh, potentially then Sophia is, is taking us on towards the center of the galaxy that you mentioned before is is that on a timeline as well or we I mean how how are we going to travel for for thousands of years what were ideas yes I call it the journey of living eternity And the correction that starts now is an eternal journey. And our participation in it as human beings becomes an eternal witnessing and an eternal um, interaction. And actually, the secret and the beauty of everlasting life comes to be revealed in the process of this journey. And so I have, a, like to say, I'd like to leave everyone with a name, a title, for the Sophia myth. As I said, in its received form from the Gnostics, it's called the Fallen Goddess Scenario, and it has nine episodes. But when the moment of correction comes, which is now, and we have that magnificent opportunity the story changes. I will, I'm not calling it the Fallen Goddess scenario anymore. I've given another name to the present and future part of this story. And I call it Wisdom's Dare. Wisdom is the word Sophia. Wisdom is the name of this goddess. She is wisdom. She is not only the wisdom of the earth. Look at the earth. Is it wise or not? 
The earth is wise. All creatures of the earth are wise. The clouds, the skies, the grass is wise. The earth is a living embodiment of divine wisdom, and we are her children as well. And so wisdom dares us to join this experiment. She dares us. Hmm. And that dare comes not just from John Lash or from some words that he's speaking on this interview. It comes from her. And when you hear that dare, when you feel it, when it comes into your mind and your heart in any particular moment, that is the moment of responsibility to be a real human being in a real divine experiment. That is no fantasy, but that is what we are here for as the purpose of our presence here on this earth. And I trust that every single human being capable of responding to her, who is not too sick from the iconic infection, can know and absolutely know when that dare is in front of you. So Wisdom's Dare is the name of this experiment and the name of this story and its ongoing and eternal aspect. All right, uh, John, we'll, we'll leave our listeners with that for now. Um, and we have to have you back, obviously, sooner than rather than later and discuss the journey. And in the meantime, metahistory.org uh, is the website. It's been wonderful to have you back with us again, uh, uh, John. Uh, I, I really want to have you back, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, soon again here. But people can write you through the website. They can contact you. Obviously, again, I want to reiterate, uh, if people want to take a look more in detail in terms of, uh, of uh, your material, uh, your book, Not in His Image, is uh, an excellent resource uh, to have in everybody's library out there. Obviously, you have uh, some DVDs that you've done together with Jay Widener. Uh, is there anything else you want to say as, uh, about the website or, or anything else how people can, I guess, participate in the, in the uh, observations here that we've been talking about, uh, John? No, simply that metahistory.org is an open source learning site on the internet, and there's no commercial value attached to it at all. And uh, everyone is welcome on board. Just write me at JLL, JLL at metahistory.org if you want to get the crew notes. And this is a collaborative experiment. I will do my best uh, using the tools that I have as a sky diviner, a processional uh, zodiac reader, and so forth, to chart this journey. And uh, you can verify what I say to your own satisfaction and uh, everyone's welcome it's been a great privilege and a pleasure to talk with you again Emmett. absolutely thank you so much for your time today John certainly we'll be back with more in just a few days in the meantime keep an eye on the website for the latest my thanks to Fredrik, Lana and Elizabeth at Red Ice and a special thanks as always to you for subscribing and showing your support of our efforts we couldn't do it without you so thanks for listening have a great day we'll talk more soon